I'm Allison McNulty. We're here in my studio in Newburgh, New York on Grand Street. I am a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary artist and educator based here in Newburgh in Orange County. I use the word multidisciplinary to refer to my practice within the arts. I work with a lot of different media and materials. I make sculptures, architectural interventions, site responsive indoor and outdoor installations, performative projects, videos, works on paper and photographs. And I use the word interdisciplinary in the sense that my art making reaches into other disciplines outside the arts, like the natural sciences, geology, botany, biology, poetry, archeology, span for inspiration, material, process, collaboration, and even presentation. I was born in Bristol, Indiana, a couple hours east of Chicago, where my family's still located. Teaching is a central part of my life and my art practice as well. I'm a part-time assistant professor at Parsons, part of the new school in New York City. I've also taught at Brooklyn College, Marist College, University of Florida, and Whitman College. Place is very important to my practice, and I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge the land that I live and work on, which is unceded ancestral land of the Monse, Lenape, and Mohican tribes who've lived with the land sustainably for thousands of years before the arrival of colonists and white settlers. I do very much respect this history, honor the sacred relations of indigenous peoples to their land and express gratitude for the ways all beings benefit from the resilience of indigenous people and their ways of knowing and being with the land through history at this time and into the future. Where I live and the spatial and material conditions of place inform my art practice as a foundation in terms of a sense of place and what I think of as maybe the theoretical atmosphere of a place or how place makes thought and forms possible. I spent a lot of time in the surrounding Hudson Valley and Catskills region wandering as well as in the decayed urban environment. Also at the fringes or edges or thresholds between the two as in city parks, ruins where non-human beings are taking constructed environments back, borders, or even small areas where dwelling together with other species is particularly apparent. A lot of the wandering, exploring, observing, collecting, getting lost that I do as part of my practice and ideation, even collecting materials, I do with this guy who's a non-human companion that teaches me a lot about embodied knowledge or how I relate to my surroundings using my body as a sensor. A lot of the work I do feels like in practice a kind of excavation of histories of materials, but also just sort of the learnings or teachings or knowings, lurking perceptions that are around us all the time, but maybe remain below the surface of our awareness or our consciousness. So I work with a lot of overlooked materials, refuse, what's refused, but also ubiquitous every day around us all the time. And I'm interested in what these materials tell us about who we are, our history, how we're living and how we're connected. I think of all materials as bodies or embodiments of layered social and ecological histories. This is a series, they're called Hudson Valley Ghost Columns. And the inspiration for these column forms comes from other ruins, smokestacks from the, the hundreds of brickyards that once lined the Hudson Valley along the Hudson River. Other ruins in the Hudson Valley, this column form comes from other chimneys. I think I've built eight of them now. <laughs> They're dry stacks, so there's no glue, there's no mortar, there's no infrastructure. It's just what holds them together is gravity and friction, and they're made on site. Each one takes a solid work week or more to build. Each brick is stacked and layered with wool that is sort of like unraveled with the pointy part that would poke away from the sheep facing outwards. So they do have this sort of, you know, animated fluffy feel. When the wind blows, for instance, it moves the wool. And this one that you're seeing now is at PS21 in Chatham, New York, and it's been up for two years. I just built another one here at Basilica Hudson. And they have commissioned that one. And this is the first one that we've said from the outset is there for, quote, the life of the sculpture. So <laughs> I think that's up to us to sort of navigate together. And I find that really interesting how one might determine what the life of the sculpture is 
for instance, this one that I was just showing, it was intended to be up for a few months and they just kept saying, do you want to leave it? <laughs> do you want to leave it longer? And I um, said, yes, this, this is a really interesting experiment for me because they're historic bricks. They're fragile. They're fractured. They're very imperfect. They're the bricks made in the Hudson Valley are very tactile, very beautiful aesthetically, but they're not homogenous, right? They're not strong mm. bricks. <laughs> so wow. how long they last, I don't know. This one has changed a lot. It has become less fluffy, less aesthetically interesting to me, but also means that it's more integrated with its environment. There's yeah. sort of some kind of algae or moss growing on it. So it's fairly green, but it's still standing. <clears throat> You know, I read Thoreau in high school and I, this phrase always comes into my mind, like sucking the marrow out of life. And when I'm into the work that I'm doing and I'm like, now I'm on the right track or this is the right question um, or this is the right material to look deeper into, uh, that's what I feel like. That's like the gesture I feel like I'm doing. Um, and it's visceral like that too. But I also think about the artists, Laura and Calzadilla, they have this phrase, like art is an excuse to research something, to learn more about something and make a response to it. And I think that I'm just a curious person and what I get out of it is being able to indulge those curiosities and respond to them. Make your own metrics. Don't listen to people's advice, <laughs> right? Like make your own metrics for why you're doing it or for what your sort of sense of success is and don't make money one of those metrics. And maybe if we go on from there, what should be one of those metrics is a sense of reciprocity in terms of a giving and a taking. What you're taking in terms of material, in terms of time, in terms of asking for people's attention and what you think you're offering or returning as art making as a reciprocal relationship in that way. This program is made possible in part through the support of New York State Council on the Arts, Orange County Government, Shapiro's Furniture, and from donations from people like you. Please consider making a donation today at www.ocartscouncil.org. Thank you.